the time that AP Dow launched the story, you find that the whole thing was delivered in just over three minutes. Now, however bright the journalist, however clever the journalist, writing it in that time scale is absolutely impossible. But it had happened. And the reason is, of course, it was written by a computer. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hello there and welcome to this week's edition of Wag the Dog FM, your European public relations podcast. My name is Philip Borgemans. I'll be your guest like every single week. And this week we're going to talk about a rather disruptive topic. Uh, we'll be talking about the automation of public relations. And when I say automation, that means really the replacement of public relations tasks, skills and people by machines. With my guest, David Phillips. David has a long career in public relations. He started his own company. He was in-house as well as a PR manager. Uh, He launched his PR consultancy, then a uh, media measurement evaluation company. And he's now a lecturer and guest lecturer at several universities, some of which are uh, based in the UK, uh, Leeds Beckett University, Bournemouth, uh, but also uh, Escola Superior de Comunicação Social, that's in Lisbon. And he's the author of different books, Uh, Some of them about uh, evaluation, others about management of reputation. And now we're going to discuss with him his latest book called The Automation of Public Relations. Just self-published on Blurb. The links are, of course, in the show notes. So without further ado, here comes the disruptive topic of the future of our profession with David Phillips. Keep the peace. David, welcome on uh, Wag the Dog FM. Thank you very much indeed. I'm very pleased to be here. It's it's fun that we uh, it's nice that we talk now. Uh, I mean, I saw your uh, update and uh, like like it goes today, it's uh, via social network. So I saw your update on on Facebook, I think, about your uh, new book. Tell us about that. So it's about the the the, the possible automation of our profession, public relations. Can you just give us a, a small intro on what the general topic is, what, what you want to cover or what you have covered in your book? Yes. And basically what I've done is I've, I've looked at where um, the practice of public relations has, uh, is being um, automated or where um, things that we do um, are being automated um, and the progress of automation as it creeps into not just the public relations profession, but all the professions. And and all the professions believe that because they are professions, you can't automate what they do. Mm -hmm. And certainly what I've been finding out is that is quite the reverse. Uh, The computers are so clever, they don't want to be left behind. (laughs) And so they want to do things. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you a couple of little case studies. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, a month or two ago, um, there was a, an earthquake in uh, uh, in California. And it registered four point uh, three point four on the Richter scale, and within four minutes, um, uh, the news news wires had a report saying that there had been this um, uh, earthquake of uh, three point four on the Richter scale, and that it was. Um, the however many earthquakes there had been that year, it is not a particularly heavy one, but uh, that uh, we'd seen more of these in the past and they led up to an even bigger one. So a nice full-blown story, lots and lots of background in there, very, very good. But when you looked at the time that the release was made um, and at the time that AP Dow um, launched the story, you find that the whole thing was delivered in three minutes, just over three minutes. Now, however bright the journalist, however clever the journalist, writing it in that time scale is absolutely impossible. But it had happened. And the reason is, that, of course, it was written by a computer. Mm-hmm. So that was you know, a, a pretty good um, in- indication. So one well, has to go and have a look at these things and see how much a computer can write. And then we discover that uh, AP is also increasing the number of re- financial reports it issues each day. And it's gone up to 6,000 a day. And um, that would assume that, of course, an awful lot of people have been employed by, by uh, AP to write these reports. And, of course, they haven't. Computers are writing the reports. 
Oh, right. So what happens to all the corporate affairs guys? You know, they're, 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 that looks like they're um, uh, certainly under a certain amount of threat because the report can come out um, before the actual um, uh, corporate affairs guy can actually issue his press release. So this is sort of beginning to, to look quite interesting. When you start looking more seriously at the things that are being automated, we discover that, for example, you can do a broadcast without taking a tape machine and, and a microphone and standing on the doorstep waiting to talk to somebody, as we are doing now. It's, yeah. called, Skype. it's called Skype. And, and, you know, that crept in and we didn't really notice it arrived. But now we have some superb radio programs um, that are, in fact, um, delivered over Skype. Um, and then one goes and says, well, you know, that, that's very interesting. So where else can we see this happening? And nearly all the activities of the profession um, have now seen a tiny little um, part of this automation happening. So working on that, I started to look at, you know, how fast is this happening? How rapidly is it occurring? And so one asks oneself, well, how much, for example, of the writing that public relations people do could be automated? Well, if you go and look at what Google and what Microsoft are doing, then you discover that they have bought companies. I mean, they're seriously buying companies um, whose expertise is in creating texts of one sort or another. Um, the, these are machines that are right. And, they've, and, they're, and they're getting very, very, very clever. They're quite sentient. But so, and David, so David, you're really talking about the automation. So you're really talking about um, machines doing things that we in the PR profession were trained to do. It's not only about automating some of the boring tasks that we need to do. Like I, I, I covered that in another podcast where we look at, you know, some online tools that, you know, help you do your job easier. Here it's really replacing some core skills of real people by machines, right? So that that, that is more drastic than just, oh, let's optimize what we're doing. Absolutely. So this is much more serious. Um, and, and so you say, well, what areas of public relations um, can this now work in? And um, progressively, um, as you know, one looks at uh, how these um, uh, processes are beginning to take over, they, it's not a direct confrontation. It's not as though um, uh, the broadcasters, the BBC, for example, was suddenly taken over by Skype. No, what happens is that a little audience appears because they're listening to um, uh, your podcast and then you suddenly discover that actually, if you're in public relations, what do you listen to? Well, you don't listen to the BBC. And so the BBC starts losing some of its um, audience to um, uh, the, the podcasts. Um, and, uh, and we're seeing this more and more and more. Imagine what happens in video. Uh, when one imagines that, for example, uh, there's a huge uh, number of people watching video uh, and uh, they're not watching television. Um, and so we can see that gradually it didn't start out as being in competition with um, uh, ABC, but actually in the end it did uh, take, take over the role of um, the, the broadcast. And so we're seeing this, if you like, change in the habits of people because the automated services or the new services took over. And the automated services, we don't even notice. Mm -hmm. So how far can we go with this? Well, um, I've, I've gone so far in this book and then I said, well, of course, what we need to do is we need to know the, the, just the ordinary day-to-day -day skills. You know, um, How does a, an ordinary public relations person suddenly become good with blogging or um, good with um, uh, building profiles on on, uh, um, uh, on on social media for their clients? And we need to be able to do that because then we know how it works and, we, and we're going to need to do that anyway. More than half of the attention of journalists now is via Skype. That is via Twitter. And so, you know, we, we've, we've seen that. Um, so we need to be good at that, and then we can start being quite good at all the other things. 
Now, I haven't yet got to corporate affairs, and it's not in the book yet, because I'm going to do another book that's going to look at things like corporate affairs. And I, I could hear all the corporate affairs friends that I have saying, David, that's just one too far. You can never, ever uh, automate uh, corporate affairs. And um, I've been looking at some of the operations that are going on um, where people are actually reporting things like um, uh, new products and they do it almost to a formula and a computer can very quickly break down the formula. And so that area of public relations, once broken down, means that the computer can now write the new product um, uh, text or can produce the new product uh, sound broadcast. And if you can do that, why not? Um, a video broadcast because computers are good at produ producing um, great images. Um, as, as we know, we, we see them every day because, well, we see them on Facebook. Um, David, and, David yeah. is, is, it, is it then a fact of, is it, is, do you see these, this automation happening in what I would call the more the, the, the production side of our business? Like we write, we create video, we create audio. Uh, do you see that there, that, that will be the attention? Because, of course, colleagues will say, well, it's still about humans talking to each other. At the same time, uh, I am following the, the artificial intelligence sector a little bit with my background at IBM. Um, and um, I know that a company, for instance, I think it's a company in Hong Kong, has replaced, like fully replaced, their human CFO, uh, with an, uh, a first version of an artificial intelligence uh, computer. And this computer is now running all the financials. So would, would you see, would you argue that it could go so far also with us in PR? Yes. No, and IBM is a very good example. IBM's latest versions, latest activities, um, uh, 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 newest um, uh, sentient software programs um, are very good and will very soon be... Um, uh, brilliant and really, really, really clever um, uh, in that you can have conversations with them. I, I, I haven't got in, in... IBM doesn't let you in, you know, uh, for some reason or other. Mm -hmm. One doesn't understand why, ho-ho. But, <laughs> in fact, um, if you look at the latest that IBM's up to and what Google's up to, then it, th that is very, very dramatic. And you, we're now having these very sentient, very creative... Um, uh, software programs that are due to emerge. The, and having said that, if you look at the pace of it, the pace is really incredible and it's getting faster. So what happens is, if you say, right, what I want to do is I want to be able to say, right, let's go and have a look at the relationship between this organization and its key, now, good we'll call them publics, and I would call them um, cultures. But uh, let's go and have a look at these key cultures um, and see where there is uh, uh, where there are common interests and where there are divergent interests and where there are convergent interests. And let's see if we can, if this, we as a, as a computer program, um, can see if we can build a better relationship. There's every good economic reason why every company in the world would like the answer to that. So are you now talking about a system that would do the full analysis automatically and on a regular basis, probably in real time, of our what some of us would call our stakeholder management? Exactly that. And, and that's one of the keys, in real time. Uh, so that you, know, you can see where there is divergence. And computers are very good at, you know, if you often divergence, they'll identify it very quickly. And then the clever bit is it says, and because we have this divergence or this type of divergence, then we need to do this or that. Um, and, uh, and the computer will then come up with a number of solutions and will probably be better equipped to, um, provide the answers to those, um, those problems than a, a modern day, um, uh, corporate affairs or public relations manager. You say, David, what you're, what you're describing is, in fact, I'm, I'm just thinking about analogies, but uh, I know in, in, in the military industry, for instance, the, the, the real-time stakeholder analysis that we would uh, say uh, in, 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 uh, in the army or in, in, um, in a defense organization, you know, that would be called 
an, an real-time analysis, threat analysis, and then the computer comes up with different scenarios on uh, how to handle different threats. That is something that is existing and that is working every day on, on different military installations. So I can see that we could translate that into our profession, doing real-time stakeholder analysis, computer coming up with, hey, you know, that group is shifting towards this area. We could do this and this and this, coming up with different engagement scenarios. Yeah, yeah exactly that. Um, uh, but of course, partner relations is a little bit more complex um, because um, you know, there are a, a wide range of different cultures that, that, that play um, in the uh, public relations sphere that don't play in the military sphere. Um, but it, uh, very, very, the, the, the math is very similar, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. So um, now I suppose the next thing is to say, well, you know, how is this going to affect a very ordinary young lady who uh, got her degree three years ago is now making it a very good uh, living as a public relations uh, account executive? Um, and uh, what's going to happen to her? Well, um, to start with, she's going to have to be very good at understanding what things like social media do. And it's not just social media, new things are cropping up all the time and we get a little bit baffled by them and have to work at them. So, for example, we see software coming along um, and recommending uh, lists of people uh, or press lists um, and based on what journalists say their interests are or based on analysis of their Twitter feeds. So they're having to learn those kinds of things, but coming up behind them much faster than that or much more important than that, is this whole area of automated um, uh, analysis of uh, the stakeholder environment, uh, of the cultural environment. Um, and also alongside that is um, uh, the the need for public relations to perform uh, better, produce better results, and to prove those results. Bear in mind that I have a background in in uh, media relation, media analysis, mm-hmm. uh, and not to mention a couple of books, um, but also that we also get to the point where um, the, the, the computers are, are providing the answers, and they're saying, "And this is what you should do." And then one day it doesn't even ask; it just does it. It, it does it. Yeah, that's the next step. Then, of course, it will suggest. Like I, I just downloaded an app which gives me, you know, social networking profiles automatically. Uh, of someone I'm going to meet next week. So the, 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 the software is just scanning the web. And before I get into that meeting, I know what is publicly available about that person in a certain format, which of course gives me an unfair advantage, but you know, that's how it works. But as you said, there will be a time when suddenly it doesn't just propose, it will simply engage and do. Yes, exactly that. Now, how far away is that? Well, um, I get comes as a bit of a surprise to discover that um, uh, newspaper articles are being produced and are being published about earthquakes already. Mm-hmm. That's now quite old. Um, and um, so these things are already happening and we don't really notice how fast they're coming at us. So what our young lady ought to be doing now is looking and seeing what is actually happening and getting on top of it and saying, how do we strategically apply this um, professionally and for our organizations, for our clients? Um, and, and and she has to do it because she's 26, um, because her boss is only 28, is too old, doesn't understand these, these things, didn't have that lecturer a long time ago, uh, saying the internet is going to be very important, mm. uh, and so and, and, and every time I talk to um, uh, public relations managers, with one or two exceptions, no, no notable exceptions, um, you find that they actually believe that um, yes, this is very important, but it doesn't affect me, and that it doesn't affect me. Group of people currently uh, are the people who are running the public relations industry. So will this new evolution be for the public relations industry or for something that grows up alongside it um, and eventually replaces it? Because that is the history of uh, technological improvement. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I fear for the industry no end, hence the book, written in in, in a bit of a hurry. But um, and, And one of the reasons that, in fact, I decided that I would use a 
uh, an automated system rather than go to a publisher. Um, you know, a publisher you know, spends ages negotiating and then uh, uh, will spend some time um, uh, with editors and all sorts of people. And eventually your book appears um, in its uh, pre-publication state and then they print 10,000 copies um, and, and promote it. And this process has taken two or three years. Well, it's taken a year from start to finish. The process of producing this book from start to finish, less than three weeks. Yeah, and yourself and you self-published as well, and you're putting it out there. It's it's a it, that is definitely a trend, and I think it's a smart trend because um, my very first interview for the very first episode of this podcast um, was with Robert Phillips, and and as well he he um, you know he he published his book and he self-published as well. Uh, that is definitely an area. Now, one of the things that you mentioned, I think, is interesting. I I went recently went through the European Communications Monitor uh, research report from the uh, the ACD and the UPRIRA. And we clearly see that education is a huge problem, not education, well, first of all, the education of the next generation of PR people, but also of people who are already in the business. There is an educational gap and there is an educational need. Now, with what you are saying, that suddenly, like, increases this need enormously about topics who are really new and who have maybe not been very well documented except through people like you and and writing books but so there is a huge gap that there can we still you know do we still have time to uh, to move ahead um I, I i'm not sure if we do um I, i'm very pleased to see that the cipr are taking this quite seriously um and that uh, they they they've seen um, that something is going to happen. Um, and I'm, I'm very pleased to see it. But, of course, that is for those people who are rather dedicated to this because they are members of the active members of the CIPR. Um, uh, I, I suspect that one or two significant consultancies will start using these um, changes, um, and that will change the, those agencies quite dramatically. And they will seem to be doing something uh, that the mainstream is not doing. Um, but I, I, my guess is that the mainstream agencies, uh, the um, uh, medium-sized uh, PR uh, offices, in, in, in-house offices, um, will um, start to begin to uh, feel under a different kind of pressure. Um, Let's, let's think in terms of our, a public sector, public relations person in a hospital, you know, and suddenly, you know, the, the, the rules of what you can and cannot say are understood by a computer better than uh, by a person. So they don't leave the hospital legally liable uh, mm-hmm. for statements that are made. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a very senior PR person who has that, those kinds of responsibilities. And all of a sudden, the computer d- does it better, and they rely on that computer. Um, and uh, then eventually, th- they haven't got a job. Yeah. There isn't a job. You know, um, now, how long will that take? Um, if it takes five years, I would be surprised. Now, if that's, um, you know, the big rump of the PR industry who, by and large, don't do the education, don't stay up to date with what's happening, um, and it is at the rump, more than half, um, then I think they are, they will seriously, uh, need a new career within the next five years. Yeah. David, in the research for your book, what are the examples you, you started off with an example, but what are the examples that shocked you, let's say, or that, that you were wowed by that it was already happening today? What are the, the most striking examples that you've seen? Oh, uh, no question about the decision-making software um, that Google and, and um, uh, IBM have. Uh, the, uh, that, that you can go and play with them on, online. You, yeah. you try them out and you can say things like, you know, um, if um, one were to... Um, uh, have an increased value of your shares, and if your um, uh, uh, and if you have an announcement to put on the back of that that increase in in value of the shares, what would it do to the shares? And this computer will say, "We'll put it up," but there will be um, 
a number of people will doubt what's going on. Yeah. So the option is to do something else. Now, they can do that almost speaking in, in, in English. I mean, it's that good. Um, and certainly the, the, um, the language capabilities are just astonishing. Uh, you can speak in, um, I, I don't speak um, Portuguese as well as I should, despite teaching in, in Portugal. And um, in real time, speaking into my phone, it produces Portuguese that surprises my friends in Portugal. Um, and so, you know, all of a sudden my, my phone becomes my translator from English into Portuguese and from Portuguese back into English. Um, and, and, you know, better, you know, excellent uh, Portuguese talking about my technical subject of public relations. Very happy. It's quite easy to do. Um, uh, and um, this book, uh, there's a Portuguese version of it already done. I, I didn't do anything other than feed the, the, the words into um, in, in, into a computer program. Yeah. Um, then there are things like um, uh, the ability to identify colour and what colour is doing on the screen. Is it producing a picture? Is it producing a diagram? Is it producing a video? And that sort of thing. Um, and so, <coughs> excuse me, the ability to create images um, and to create new images. Uh, is now getting very, very advanced. And when one thinks about the, the bandwidth that's being used, and it's pretty common, I don't have a particularly powerful uh, PC here, but um, uh, I'm absolutely amazed at being able to put a photograph into a piece of software, move the tree in the photograph from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, merge it in as though I had a complete um, uh, uh, editorial set. Now, uh, the calculations that have to be done for a computer program to do that are astonishing. Um, and yet it does it quite happily. Um, and so, you know, we're seeing these things, and, and some of them are just a bit of a joke, aren't they? So what happens if I put a moustache on David Phillips? Well, let's try it. And it looks like, it doesn't look like some sort of cartoon. It looks like it a... It really piece. looks, yeah, it really looks like it. Yeah. No, and it's true. I mean, one of the things that I have I was amazed with was, um, and, and again, I'm a bit biased because I'm following that news very closely, but uh, Watson, so the the, the intelligence system uh, by IBM, is, is uh, it was just announced that it, it will be able to read X-rays and not just read them, but also do the analysis and, again, you know, say, in this case, what I'm seeing on this X-ray, you know, this is what we should do or that the doctors should do. And that is already very, uh, very something that is very, going very forward because it's a complex thing to read X-rays. Uh, it's not just an image; it's 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 a very specific type of image, uh, and then on on the basis of that, make decisions. So it, it is going very fast and uh, and very quickly. What what do you see, um, David, as 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 a possible reaction? I mean, what what are what can we do as an industry, as professionals? What you know, what, what should be our take on this? Because it is going very fast. Not a lot of people are thinking about this. Uh, you mentioned that the CIPR is, 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 is doing things, but what, what, what would be the take for, uh, for us PR professionals? Well, let's stay with the, with the, with the professional, with the, uh, CIPR, uh, PRCA and so on. Um, and uh, one of the first things they need to do is to um, look very closely at the ethical issues. Um, the, 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 we now have ethical issues that are very, very uh, difficult because computers can um, not only look at your X-ray, but they can also pretend it was somebody else's X-ray without any difficulty at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they can come up with different interpretations. Um, and somebody could quite easily do that kind of thing. So that the ethical issue uh, or issues involved are, are really quite significant. And I think that some of those ethical issues will lead to legislation in due course. Now, if we as a profession do that, that's going to be very helpful. If we wait until there's some terrible scandal and then some very, very fast um, uh, uh, um, lawmaking going on in the background, I think that could be really quite dangerous. So ethical issues are very important. So recognize we've got a, a change happening. We don't necessarily know what the change is, but we know what it's going to do. Secondly, let's have a look at the ethical issues that those kinds of changes do. Thirdly, then we can turn around to all our members, and not just our members, but to the people who are not members. We're doing 
this kind of thing as, as publicists um, in all sorts of places and say, right, these are the kinds of things that are happening. Here's a number of, of, of things. There are many more. Uh, if you can contribute to that list, absolutely fine. Um, and here are things that you can do alongside it, certainly for the next few months, if not years, um, and still have a living. And these are areas where you know, you're going to have to live with the idea that the computer will do it and you won't. And so you need a set of different skills. And we will provide this, provide you with a new set of skills. Um, and um, I think that's what the professional organisations can do. What we can do as individuals is to get involved with, with um, uh, the people who are very good at doing you know, people like um, um, uh, Stephen Waddington, um, you know, who, who are taking these things very seriously, um, you know, and have the authority of an ex-president, um, and, uh, and people like yourself uh, and, and so on, who um, are, are, have a voice in the industry um, and can say, right, you know, um, as far as we can see, this is not a joke, this is for real. But also to say, and um, this is a threat, but it needn't be a, 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 a life-threatening threat. It could be a tremendous opportunity. And it will be a huge opportunity. And uh, so that's the, the, the third thing that the, the profession can do. And then, of course, is to then say, right, now let's go and talk to these guys who are deeply involved in doing this automation. And let's see if we can get them to do the automation right for us. Mm -hmm. So what happens, if we, what happens if we do get uptight and close and say to um, uh, some of the people who are really bright in this area and say, OK, um, now... What we'd very much like to be able to do is, is we would very much like to be able to collect information about products in development in such a way that at the point where we need to be able to introduce new products or new services, we will have the comprehensive information available for an automated process that will optimise the launch. So we're not involved in writing the, the, the briefs. We're not involved in writing the press releases. We're not. We're invite, we're in, we are involved in making sure that the 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 compute the the programs that are working this thing optimize um, the the launch, optimize the effects of the launch, optimize um, the the market um, at a very early stage. So we're involved in in not writing the press release or or. Uh, involved in running the event, what we're involved in is optimizing the opportunity. Meaning now, that we're, we're still in the driving seat and that we, in a certain way, control, but that the system is helping us, but that we're still in the driving seat, right? Yeah. Um, okay. but we didn't write the press release. No, we didn't no. invite our friends. Yeah. Okay, David, this is a fascinating topic. I will definitely go deeper into your book. I'll put it in the show notes for, for the listeners so they can uh, link to it and, and uh, get a copy, of course. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll put some of the things that we've discussed in the show notes so that people can uh, can look at this further. Let's do this again in a, in a couple of months and see where we are on uh, PR automation. Thank you for being a part of the show. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope we didn't scare you too much, but it is an important topic and things are only going to get faster and faster and more complex and more complex. So it's really something that we need to look into. The show notes with uh, really interesting links that David sent me through by email uh, will be on the uh, Wag the Dog FM website. So that's www w.wagthedog.fm. You can find all the show notes in there and links to uh, David Phillips's book as well. If you like the show, please go to iTunes, review us, give us a couple of stars, a comment. Um, and also, for those who would like to be uh, kept in the loop of uh, the next plans, I already discussed shortly uh, the plan to create a community around the podcast with all of you, and uh, maybe also looking at uh, creating uh, courses on certain topics, all that nice stuff. If you want to be kept in the loop of that, please do sign up for the newsletter. Again, you will find the sign-up box uh, on Wag the Dog FM or on my uh, sister website, www.onlineprtraining.com. And uh, you'll find the box there. Just leave me your first name, last name, email address. You'll be kept in the loop. We will not spam you, promised. 
and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Until next week, do the right thing. Keep the peace.